welcome to this edition of In The Labs with me, Becky. Now, in this video, I'm going to walk you through the process of creating a two-sided project. So we're going to look at creating this trinket tray. Now, this tray is perfect for jewellery items, your little knickknacks, or even to turn it into a snack tray. So in terms of the actual project itself, in the software, we have the ability to create two-sided parts. So what does that mean? So that means we're able to cut something on one side of your material block, turn it over and then machine the bottom side. And we can design all of that in our software. So we're gonna kind of walk you through the process of the design. So we are using Aspire because we're doing a little bit of modeling there. Um, and I'll just show you how we set up the file and how everything was created. Um, but really the crux of this is we're going to look at how we flip our material over to ensure that we have correct alignment in X and Y so that everything is located accurately. Right, and so let's just jump into the software and then we'll just take a look at that file. So we're going to start by creating a new file. So as we're working with a two-sided project, we're going to use the double-sided job type that enables us to design and machine on both sides of our material. We set our job size, seven by 10 by one inch thick, as E0 position. Now, because we have two sides that we need to machine into, we need to set the Z0 for both sides of the material. In which case, I'm going to set the top side, so this left one here, to the material surface. And then when we flip that material over, I want to reference from the same face. So I'm going to use this option here to zero off the same side. And what will that will actually mean is when we come to zero the bottom side, we're actually going to do it off the machine bed. So we're always referencing from the same face. X, Y, date and position, lower left hand corner. And then we have the option to choose which direction we flip our material between the sides from left to right bottom to top there's no right or wrong way to do this uh, I'm just going to go with the bottom to top option here and then we'll work with a very high modeling resolution and we'll go ahead and press OK okay so to help speed things along we're actually going to import some vectors that I've previously drew up in the software Okay, so here are our vectors. I'm just going to press F9 to ensure that's in the center of my job. So I started off by drawing an ellipse to represent the overall shape border. Then I offset that inwards to create an inner kind of border, which is this vector here. And then using the polyline tool, I drew a series of kind of like a zigzag continuous shape uh, to the top portion um, of the elliptical shape. And then using the node edit tools, I managed to then uh, turn all of those straight points into smooth points to create this nice swirly shape pattern that we've got here. And then with that vector, I offset that on both sides to create uh, these vectors that we've got here. And then using the interactive trim tool with that inner border, I was able to trim those shapes away to create a series of closed vectors that look like this here. And these are what we're going to use to essentially create our recesses in for uh, the kind of negative shape in our trinket tray. So let's just quickly model that up. So we're gonna tile our windows. And then we're just gonna take that initial original vector and I'm just going to delete it. I'm just going to drag and select all of these vectors. So I'm going to go into the modeling tab, into the create shape tool. We're going to apply a rounded profile. Where we're going to scale that to an exact height of 0.5. We're going to give that a name. We'll just call that recesses, press apply. And there is our shape, okay? So it's currently positive. So we actually want to make that negative. So we're gonna use the subtract option here. Okay, so that's made that uh, negative shape, which is perfect, so we can close out. So obviously we need a plane of some kind for us to attach those negative shapes to. So we're just gonna put in a zero plane. Okay, 
Now I just want to look at softening the where the negative shapes meet with that plane. So we're actually going to take both of those components and then we're going to go into the smooth filter and that's just going to apply a general smooth according to how much smooth I want to put in there. Now the software is going to warn us that we need to bake that or it's going to bake it. I'm happy to do that. What that means is it's going to be a permanent change. Once I've baked it I can't split apart those two components again unless I go back through the undo command. But I'm happy to do that. This is exactly what I want to do so I'm not too worried about that at all. Okay, so then we're able to then use the slider. I'm going to put a maximum smoothing on that and you should notice the difference here in the 3D view. So we've got nice smooth shapes there. Okay, that. Um, and then that will just close out of the form. Okay, so that's pretty much the top side. So now we need to model the bottom side. So I'm going to take just this vector and we're going to create the base shape. So we're going to right click and just use this option here to copy to the other side. And we can switch to the bottom side like so. And in the 3D view, if I twiddle that around, we can see the top side there. And in the 2D view, we can actually see the vectors in green. Uh, I can't actually select them, but it's almost as if we're looking through our material block in the 2D view to see what the vectors are on the other side. If you didn't want to see what's on the other side, we can simply toggle off the uh, double sided view by using that button there. In this case, let's just go ahead and just turn that on. So I'm going to take this vector and I'm actually going to copy it and we're going to go into transform objects and we're just going to alter the height here. And we're going to make the height of that four, keeping the link XY checked so it scales in proportion, press apply, and then we're going to right click and paste in our original. Now this vector is going to act as a flat base for us. So we're going to take both of those vectors and we're going to go into the create shape tool. We're going to apply a rounded shape. This time we're actually going to blend to inner vectors. And what that means, it's going to take this profile and it's going to blend it from this vector to this vector here, where it will flatten off in the middle. We can give that a height. So we'll give that a height of 0.8. And we're just going to call this one base and then go ahead and press apply. Okay, close out, I'm happy with that. So you can see what that looks like. So if you wanted to have more of a better view of what we've got here, uh, if we just undraw the two sided view, so that's the, the base there. And obviously with it in double sided view, uh, we're actually seeing the plane there uh, from that kind of subtracted shape on the top. Okay, but uh, if we was to cut this out, this is kind of what we'd, we'll be seeing here. Right, and so some things that we do need to think about. So we need to think about firstly, how do we ensure that when we flip our material over, our part is going to be aligned in terms of the X and Y positions. And secondly, when we cut the bowl out, how is it going to be held into our material block? So let's switch to the top side. And first we're going to think about how we're going to keep everything aligned when we flip our material over. Now you might want to use a jig and set that up on your CNC, or you might want to use the dowel hole method. So I'm gonna use the dowel hole method in this case. There's two methods here. You can do this by um, having your dowel positions set up symmetrically. So to draw what your dowels would look like, use a circle tool, Make sure you measure the diameter of your dowel and then put that diameter into this form here. I've measured mine and they're coming up at 0.4. And then you could set that up so it's um, in the center of your material like so. And then we can close out and then what we could do is take that and then press Control shift 8 to flip that horizontally. And then you've got two pins there. And ultimately we're going to cut pockets into those dowel holes so that our dowels can slot into that. We're also going to take the reverse of that on the bottom side and machine into the spoil board so that we can get the alignment when we flip that material over. Now this isn't a wrong way of doing it however I feel that this way because we've set up the dowels in a symmetrical fashion you do run the risk of flipping your material over the wrong way. You might have it set up in the software to flip from bottom to top but in the actual physical world 
you might forget about that and you might flip from left to right because they are, they're actually going to align anyway because they're in a symmetrical uh, pattern. So the way to avoid it and a real fail safe way of um, aligning your material so there's only one possible way for it to flip over is by setting it up in an asymmetrical fashion. So this is where we randomly place our dowel. So I'm just going to take uh, the dowel there and we're just going to move that perhaps somewhere over here and then I'm going to create another copy and let's move that somewhere over here oh so it didn't actually copy that so control and we'll just position that up there and drop that in okay so we've got three dowels there we're going to machine though the pockets into the top side of our material with those vectors let's copy that over to the other side and then on the other side, because the software automatically kind of flips that for you, we're going to take the pattern on the bottom side and we're going to machine those vectors into our spoil board. And then ultimately our dowels are going to connect uh, with the holes on the bottom side and then everything's going to be perfectly aligned in X and Y, which is perfect. Okay, so that's the alignment. Now we need to think about how we're going to hold our material our bowl into our material block so let's just undraw the double-sided view for now we're going to look at adding in tabs so we'll go into the modeling tab we're going to insert a new level and then we're just going to right click and set the combine mode of that level to merge and then in our clip art tab if you go to the clip art tab you've got a folder called 3d tabs we're just going to drag in this circular tab anywhere into our job and then we can then take that and we're just going to position that kind of on all four points. So one to the left and then control shift H to flip that horizontally. And then we're going to take this one here, control, we're just going to snap that to the top over here. And then with that selected, we're going to press nine on the keyboard. That's going to rotate that in increments of 45 degrees and then do a control shift and V to flip that vertically. And there we've got all four tabs in place and we're pretty much ready now to go over and start thinking about our toolpaths. So let's switch over to the toolpaths tab. Okay, so first and the most important thing we should always do is just check over our material setup, ensuring that what we've got here is exactly what we're going to do when we set that up on our CNC with our material that we're going to cut into. So double check that thickness, one inch. XI date in position is in the lower left hand corner. For the top side, we are setting our Z zero off the top of the material. Now, because we're working in 3D, the software is asking us where do we want to position our model in relation to the thickness of our material. In this case, I always like to put that kind of in the middle of our material. So I'm just going to double click on that line. That's going to put that bang on in the center of the thickness of our material, ensuring we have a gap above and we have a gap below. That's just going to help in case there's any inconsistencies with that material thickness. Okay, and then you want to check over your rapid Z gaps and uh, home and start positions, ensuring everything is safe and appropriate for your particular setup. So first things first, is we're actually going to take the vectors that represent our dowel holes and we're going to run a pocket toolpath here. Okay, so we're going to cut uh, through our material by 0.5 of an inch. So really you need to measure your dowels or at least cut them to size to ensure that um, they're going to fit within the areas that you're going to cut down to. So we're going to go with half an inch using a quarter inch end mill and we're just going to give this one a name and we'll call this one pocket dowels and then we'll go ahead and press calculate and the software will calculate that for us in which then we can go ahead and run that preview. Okay, so we can close out and then run on to the next toolpath. So we're going to take this vector here. And we're going to run a 3D roughen toolpath. Okay, so this 3D roughen toolpath is just going to hog out the material ready for us to go in there with a smaller or, or not even a smaller tool, just a finer tool to uh, then kind of machine out those uh, the, the extras that we've got left over to give us that nice smooth shape. So we're going to use the selected vector here and we're going to go the boundary offset of a quarter of an inch. So we're actually going past this part and this is just going to help ensure that we cut through our material. We're going to have a machine allowance of 0 0.04. So that's just going to leave skin of material on there for our finishing tool to chop away at. 
So then we're going to give that a name. We'll just call that 3D Roofing and we'll go ahead and press Calculate. And then we'll just preview that toolbar. It looks great. And then we can close out. Next up, we've got the 3D Finish toolbar. Okay, so here we're going to use a quarter inch ball nose this time. We're going to use that same vector boundary. Uh, this time for the offset, I'm just going to go with 0.3. So I'm just pushing that a little bit further. Um, and again, this is just to ensure that our tool uh, cuts down um, the sides. More importantly, like on both sides, so that we get a nice cut through, no cusping, that sort of thing. Um, so we're just going to go with 0.3, and we've got an offset here. So it's going to kind of go round and round and round like so. So, so we'll go ahead and calculate that and then we'll preview that okay and that is the top side done so at this stage we take that piece of material off of our machine and then we then start to run the toolpaths for the bottom side so let's just close out here and then we're just going to switch over to the bottom side by using that option up here so switch into the bottom okay and then again just let's just double check on our material setup so remember we want to set the z0 for the bottom side on the machine bed uh, and that's just so that we're referencing from the same face of the top side okay everything all looks good here so we'll just hit okay there so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take those dowels. Now these dowels, are, we're going to actually machine into our spoil board. Okay, so we're going to go to the pocket toolpath. Now because we are machining into the spoil board, we're actually going to set our start depth here to be one inch. That's going to account for the material thickness, which is not going to be there. So we're just going to drop it down by 0.1 and then it's that will be at the kind of machine bed and then it's going to start cutting at the cut depth that we want it to which in this case I'm just going to go the small value of 0.25 so that's a total of three quarters of an inch room for our dowels to fit into okay we're going to use the quarter inch end mill and then we're just going to call this one pocket dowels but then I'm just going to make a note that this is for the spoil board so I know that the material's not on the bed at this stage. Software is saying we're going to cut through, that's exactly what I want to do. If we just put that down the X view, so you can see, so if we just zoom out there, so this drop down, that is our material thickness, that's that one inch uh, depth, start depth that we've put it at, and then the cut depth is at the bottom, so you can see it's just going to cut straight into our spoil board. Then we can we can preview that, however, in theory, it's actually going to preview that into our material block, which we won't be doing. We are only machining these dowel holes into our spoil board, okay? And then once we've done that, we can then take the top side of our project, which will have dowels here, here, and here, and then we're going to flip that material over in the direction that we've got set, so it's from bottom to top in that direction, and then we'll locate those dowels on the um, machine bed that well, we've just cut into and then we can secure everything in place and you'll see us go through that process in the lab section okay then so let's just close out here and then we'll get on to machining the 3d part so we're going to take that vector back into the 3d roughen toolpath I'm going to go with the exact same settings here so we're just going to hit that calculate button okay and then we're just going to preview that toolpath and we'll close out and then we'll go into the 3D finish toolpath and again the exact same settings just going to hit that calculate button and we could go ahead and preview that okay and that's what the bottom side would look like so if we switch on the uh, top side you'll see this is kind of what we're going to get now you'll notice we've got all of these kind of pixels and we've got this cusping around the outside and what that is uh, down to is the fact that we are using a rounded tool and obviously because of the roundness of the tool it's actually not going to cut away like cleanly on the edge and we're going to get that cusp effect so what we could do to eliminate that is look at adding in a zero plane um, where we then kind of negate the the actual height of that so we're dropping it down past 
uh, the modeling plane, which is at zero, um, and then just bringing that tool further down just to give us a nice clean cut around the edge. Okay, so if we just close out, we can do that. So we'll just switch over back over to uh, the design tab and we're going to go into the modeling side of things. And on the bottom side, we're just going to insert a new level and we're going to set the combine mode of that to merge. And then with that level selected, we're just going to put in a zero plane. Okay. And then what we're going to do, so I'm just going to kind of try and show you. So if we put that in the X view. So at the moment, our tool is like literally coming up to our zero plane. And so the, round, the roundness of the tool is going to leave that cusp effect. Now, if we actually just uh, undraw the double sided view here as well. And then if we go to our zero plane, okay, which is currently at zero. So it's currently where the tool is just dropping down. There. But if we go to our zero plane and then put in a negative value, let's try zero point a one three and we'll just pull that you should see um the other kind of plane okay so you can see that here okay so this is originally where zero was and now this is where the point one three is so we're basically telling the tool to drop down to this point over here and so that should give us a nice clean cut around the edge there so we're going to put that back in Z and then we're just going to close out and then we're just going to switch back over to the toolpaths tab. And then over here, we're actually just going to go ahead and we're just going to recalculate all of those toolpaths. Okay, so it's just going to give us those same ones and just go through those. Okay, and then what we can do is we can then just go ahead and then go to preview toolpaths. And if we just reset that preview, and then we'll just go ahead and preview all the sides. And there we have it. You can see now that our tools managed to cut through. We've got, we don't see that cusping effect uh, and we're getting a real kind of good representation of exactly what we're going to see on our CNC. So at this stage, what we do is we just simply go ahead and we'd save out all of the toolpaths. Now, I'm not going to show you how to save toolpaths. However, I'm going to show you a little top tip. So we do have the option here to add side to toolpath name if you wanted to uh, output those toolpaths and then have the software kind of just tell you this is for the top side or this is for the bottom side. That's a useful little tip there. Uh, we're going to save them out and then we'll go and meet you over in the labs. Okay, so this looks pretty good. It's oak, looks about one inch. So we'll just double check that uh, and then we'll go and set everything up on the CNC. Okay, so it looks like, yeah, it's pretty much one inch on there, happy with that. Um, so we're gonna go and take our material, we're going to secure it into the scoreboard and then we're gonna set up the machine and then we'll machine the top side to that.
Okay, so we're done with the pocket for the dowels and the 3D roughing tool pack that uses that quarter inch end mill. Whilst that tool's still in, I'm just gonna check that our dowels fit in the dowel holes. That way, if there is a problem with whilst the tool's still in, we can then go ahead and just oversize it if we need to. So we're just gonna check that now. Okay then, so we've finished machining the top side of our trinket bowl. Uh, so we're actually going to call it a night right now and the beauty of the setup that we've got in this file is that tomorrow we can reset our X0, Y0 on the machine uh, and then machine the bottom set of dowel holes into the spoil board and that's going to give us perfect alignment and that really is the benefit of using this method because we're able to just switch the machine off and we can start it tomorrow we could start it next month or next year if we wanted to and we know that we're still going to get perfect alignment between the two sides so that's it for today i'm out of here and we're back in the lab so um last night we left it where we've machined the uh top side i've left it on the machine bed but we're actually going to take that off right now we're just going to reset the X0, Y0 for the machine uh, and then we can load the tool pass for the bottom side and because we're doing it that way that means everything's going to line up correctly. So I'm just going to take the material off the machine bed uh, or just kind of give that a clean and then we're just going to reset everything and then we'll run the dowel holes um, for the bottom side and we're going to do that direct into the scoreboard so we're not going to have our material there for that. And then when we cut into the scoreboard, that's going to give us the location pins and we can simply flip our material over and everything will just be lined up perfectly. Okay, so the pocket toolpath has been done for our dowels. So I've got three dowels. I'm going to put those dowels directly into those holes in the spoil board. I personally prefer to do it this way because I feel it's easy to actually locate your material onto the board rather than have the pins in the board and we're locating to the holes underneath. Uh, but really, that's personal preference. Um, one thing to remember is well, the way we're flipping our material, so when you're doing this, kind of look back at your file to make sure you're flipping it in the same direction that your file is. However, the way that I've actually set up the vectors for the dowel pins, I've done it in an asymmetric random order, so there is only really one possible way that we can actually locate it, which is the benefit of doing it this way because you can't go wrong, it's not going to be misaligned. So we're going to put these pins in those holes, we're going to locate our material, we're going to flip that over, uh, put it in, and then we're going to secure it in with our screws to ensure that, that board doesn't move, and then we're going to jump straight into the 3D roofing tool path and then after that we're going to change the tool where we're going to set the Z0 for the ball nose tool off the spoil board, the machine bed. Remember that's where we've got it set up in our file so we must remember to do that on the actual machine. And we're going to run the 3D finish tool path and then everything should be done. So we'll see you on the other side.
Okay, so here is the finished trinket tray. So we put that little stain on there. That's really brought out the grain, actually. It looks really nice. I think if I was to cut this again, I'd definitely go to my trusty plywood. I think seeing all of those layers come through those recesses would look really nice. So if you fancy having a go at creating your own trinket tray, then just simply head over to your VNCO account where you can download the project files from there. And if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. And if you've not yet subscribed to our channel, hit that subscribe button for instant updates on the latest videos that we'll be releasing. So thank you for watching and happy making.